are recounting the story of a Nigerian doctor, James King, who has recounted how he helped save the life of a passenger who was almost dying on board a flight from Kano to Lagos. He shared the amazing story on his Facebook page, and he says, it is getting clearer now why I was born. I just saved a life who would have possibly died mid-air in the aircraft I was a passenger in. So now the summary of the story is that he was on the flight, he saw this man whose head dropped, and there was a bit of commotion. People didn't know what to do. He rushed to the man. He was ba basically able to, you know, delay the man passing out just up until they landed. He had already told the air hostesses to call the airport to tell them to arrange an ambulance so that the moment the aircraft lands, they'll put him in the ambulance and rush him to the hospital. Mm. On getting there now, the Nigerian factor, there, was, there, were no, um, there were no ambulances there, or there was no ambulance. So they wanted to just use the vehicle they had to convey him, and they said, no, this man is going to die if you do that. Is there a hospital around? They said yes, and so immediately they carried him in the same way to the hospital, and it was just a relieving moment yeah. for him. Now, there are several, several things to look at in this conversation, Definitely. and maybe before I go into the angles I want to look at, maybe I should ask you how the story made you feel. Well, it basically shows that people will still have kind hearts. Um, like someone said, sometimes... Miracles are basically people with good hearts, you know, um, but for that doctor's kindness and um, generosity, this man could have died. And if you listen to the story or if you read the story, he said that he was basically going for a humanitarian project, you know, to save lives that was poorly funded. So I'm presuming he was going for a project that had to do with, um, you know, helping people with their health issues, and then apparently they didn't get funding for that kind of project. So... But that did not deter him to still have done good, you know, when he wanted to. So I, I feel uh, this is a very good uh, story, and it highlights the fact that people still have goodness in their hearts, despite the harsh conditions we live in. Very true. I, I like that. You know, it was a sweet story that at the end of the day, the story didn't end in the situation of the man died. Mm. But, you know, it brings us to the issue of our airlines, our health care. Yes, they have first aid kits on this planes, yeah. but should there be provision made for medical personnel I was about on planes that so that if there's an emergency? Because it, just imagine this man was not on this flight. Yeah. Let's say he missed his flight for some reason. Yeah. And that was because he asked. He said, are there any medical personnel on this no. plane, about this plane? Dead air. Yeah. There was no, so he was the only medical personnel. Yeah. Imagine that that man was not on that plane. What would have happened? So it's not every time you get to have medics, you know, about the flights. Uh, basically, you ask yourself of the people who fly at each point in time, how many persons are medical doctors? So it was basically fortunate. I feel God had a reason, you know, for this man's life, for, for that person who had been on board that, that, that airline. So, again, like you said, it begs the question of how much medical attention do we have or plan do we have for people who are on board? So you ask yourself, is it sufficient enough to have a first aid um, box um, in, in the flight? So I think airlines begin to think about now and then, the, the air authorities begin to think of how to regulate these things to ensure that for every flight, there should be a medic on board to attend to such emergencies. This because, is what happen often, no doubt, but yeah. when they happen, they could be fatal. Because when, when there's um, an accident on yeah. a plane, it's yeah. way more fatal than when five vehicles have an accident. It's yeah. more terrible because yeah. a plane has a higher number of people. Mm -hmm. you know, so when things happen, it's usually very, very bad. Yeah. So at the end of the day, that, that's a very valid point. It would be nice to have some, some people who are specifically trained. Their work would just be maybe to be in, on the airlines yeah. in the event of any medical emergencies. They will attend to the passengers because, Definitely. first of all, you're paying a lot of money. You're paying a lot of money to fly. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's it's... It's almost impossible. When you're on the road, you can quickly look for the next village to stop. You can't be flying and there's an emergency and say, ah, let's just drop out of Google yeah. quickly and get one doctor from yeah. UBTH. You know, let's just get one doctor from Definitely. one of these. So it's, it's, it's a totally different arena. You're stuck in the air. You can't land mm. until you see a safe space which, or a, clear, a clearing, you get clearance, which is not something that can be done easily. So, yeah, that's a very valid point. Definitely. Some other people raise a... Agenda. There was a tweet. Someone put out a tweet to say this could be some sort of publicity stunt to promote the airline. Did you see the tweet? I didn't see that, but I, I don't know why people will want to play with such, um, I don't know, such, such, such sensitive issue, such sensitive story um, as these. I, I don't think this is a stunt to publicize the airline. I rather think that this man, well, for me, it's a two-edged sword. This man used the opportunity to state what he did and also rode on that wing to talk about the project he was working on. If you, if you read the story, he spoke about the fact that he was going for a, a life-saving project. project that was poorly funded. 
So who knew? I mean, who knows? You could have put that in to also ensure that people can see oh, this man clearly has a good heart, and then they can fund his project. Whatever the case is, the man did good and should be commended. And in this day and age of social media publicity stunts, mm. if you do a publicity publicity stunt. The people on that airline, people on the flight, they will see you, they will catch you, they will expose you. Definitely. Now, the current case that is trending <laughs> now is the case of Okoro Blessing in Kiroka, mm. the founder of Break or Makeup, who took a photo and on her 30th birthday posted a photo side by side, um, an uncompleted building side by side, a completed building which she was standing in front of. And she said that that was her apartment and that her ex had thrown her out of his house seven, eight years ago and that eight years later, she took the stones that he threw at her and she used it to build a seven build seven room duplex or something like that. <laughs> now there are mixed reactions, lots of people congratulating her. Mm -hmm. Of course, the very big blocks carried it. And hours later, because social media is a global village, yeah. it's almost impossible for you to no, say it's, it's, something. It's a global room now. No you know, village, like it's not even yes, it's a global room, room like now. Somebody's in China. The owner of the house was in China. And he heard, he's not even on Instagram. Somebody told him that they are using your house to stunt on Instagram. Oh, he sent a voice note. She was still trying to act like, oh, no, no, this is cool. I've got it all under control and everything. And as of today, even though the way and manner in which he handled it was very uncivilized, you don't go handcuffing people and making videos of them. You're not the Nigerian police. If you feel that there's a matter that you have to deal with, by all means, report to the police and let the police make an arrest if there is a case that needs to be arrested. You're not the law enforcement agent that carries the police, bullies people. We're complaining about the Nigerian police. As much as what she did is terrible, which we'll still come to. Mm -hmm. We're complaining about Nigerian police um, breaking the law in some situations. And we, we the civilians, you know, we're, we're, we're just coming to say, oh, you, you're now enforcing what you think is right because you feel like you have power. That, does that make sense? Of course not. It doesn't make sense. Like, oh, it's just... I mean, why, why, like, why we all um, are not in support of whatever the woman did, we also are not in support of the way that the man handled the whole issue. All right. So now back to the case of what the woman did. Yeah. What were your thoughts? You know, now why, why we're having this conversation is because of the tweet of the person who said that this was a publicity stunt. And now there's this thing of everybody doing anything for clout on social media, people giving an image of perfection, an image of perfection that they have it all figured out together, whereas they have absolutely nothing figured out. What do you think of this story? So this is um, this just tells you out there, people, that social media is is a big mirage to a large extent. What you see out there is not what it is. People should understand that. And it's unfortunately these are the things that make people go commit suicide, go um, go into depression because you see a colleague of yours who did not know two times seven in class, who was always coming last, and then comes on uh, um, on social media to post pictures of. Ah, or his house. And then this is you who was a first class material. You are still planning to buy a bicycle. You're wondering, God, is this my life? Not knowing that what you're seeing there is not real. So, see, unfortunately, people don't understand these things. And then people go abroad and then take pictures at different locations over a period of time. And then they begin to post the pictures, you know, <laughs> like every other month. And you think they travel every month. I mean, go and take in different nice yeah, locations. locations. And then you post and one in February. You can't choose I mean, I mean in Bahamas, and the next you say you are in a. Come on, come on. People should, people should be wise right now. Look, social media does not present the real picture. We should understand that. And then we should not fall into that trap. So it, 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 it again tells you why some people don't want to go to social media. They just want to just stay. Because these things are every day and we see And it's a lot of negative things. energy because Definitely. it's putting you under pressure and asking of yourself, course under pressure. ah, this person has done all this under 30. What am I doing with my life? Definitely. Am I just wasting my life? I'm working so hard yet and I can't afford to buy the basic necessities of life. So, then the also, beyond looking at the pressure that we're allowing it to inflict on us, yeah. I'm looking at the people who are so pressured sure that they feel the need to tell a lie yeah. and honestly what I feel for them is more of empathy mm. because I feel like it must be in such a deep it must be such a dark place yeah. for you to want to go the extra mile like as many people are hating on her what I feel is genuine empathy like yeah. it's, she's probably not in a good place for you to go that far for you to gain traffic sometimes um, it boils down to to esteem issues people with low self-esteem will basically want to use material things to augment their esteem. So as such, they feel that by showing how much they've acquired, you would be forced to respect, to respect them. them. So people will tie material things to respect. So um, when people have esteem issues, they don't basically um, seek your respect for who they are, but they seek your respect for what they have, which a lot of people do on social media. So they believe that if I show that I have a very big car, a very big car, 
people will be forced to respect me. So again, people need to, parents need to work on their kids, work on their words. That you, your life does not depend on material things. Yes, these things are good, no doubt. Your life does not revolve around these things. People need to understand that. Understand. Look, um, it doesn't, be, it doesn't, you don't need to be, it doesn't, um, how do I put it now? You cannot be a success overnight. Real success takes time, takes hard work, takes conscientious efforts. So people should just have this mindset that you can just become, you know, overnight success and all that. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Speaking of which, you know, as a final way to wrap up the conversation, mm. RMD put out a post to talk about the fact that lots of people are seeking completion and happiness in different things, mm. ranging from, you know, put giving a persona on social media that is different from who they are in real life yeah. to enhancing their body statistics to make them feel all right. By the end of the day, you do all of this, you will still not feel complete if you are not confident in yourself. yourself. Some people came, lots of people came out in support of him. I mean, I was one of them. But some other people came out to criticize what he did, saying that he had no right. One being Densia, Densia the skin lightning and music artist, you mm. know. And she came out to say that, as much as she's, she totally understands what, that, uh, what RMD says, but she doesn't think that she wouldn't want her own father to be on Instagram spewing all of this. Now, the question is, what, when, at what point, you know, like, if, it, it seems like things are starting to change. Back in the day, you could come out and we don't know what is right and what no. isn't right anymore. Mm. People are afraid to speak what is right. The thing is, they will tell you, oh, truth is relative, right is relative. But there are some things that are basic facts, you know, standard. At the end of the day, no matter how much you seek validation from things, if you are not satisfied in yourself, yeah. alter your body all you want. Mm. Nobody's telling you not to at the end of the day, it's your body. But do everything you want to do. If you're going to feel empty, you're going to feel empty. It's more emotional than physical, which is what I think he was trying to say. I don't know if you saw the post. I agree. You know, I mean, I, I always tell people that sometimes when you see people do things on social media, from, uh, I've had a few experiences with that. Check most times, they have emotional issues and in the bid to want to cloud those emotional issues to just want to be all over the place on social media you know showing whatever they have deep down they are hurting i mean i've seen examples like that people are hurting you see them when you see someone posting on social media every now and then you need to take a look at it's an outlet yes it's a way to just um try and channel their emotions sometimes people like that they need, they need, they need help so if you now see someone doing that you notice it's a, it's a red flag somewhere. If you are in position to help, please do help. If you can't, then don't make it worse. Then secondly, no matter how many people speak against the truth, the truth will always be the truth. So people should not be afraid to speak the truth whether people accept it or not. It's just a plain truth. Well, the question now is what is the truth? In this day and age where social media has turned everything upside down and the things we grew up knowing to be our truth has started to differ. Everybody now needs to make their definition of what the truth is. But whatever the truth is for you, find it and own it. Do not hide under it. And do not try to paint an image that is not true to the world. Own who you are. Be confident in who you are. And remember that at the end of the day, it is your personal race and you will run it alone. Nobody really cares. No need trying to impress people who don't care about you on social media. We hope that we can all collectively learn lessons from all that we are seeing and hearing around us. To enjoy more of this, our Ubunga videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.